Josh just informed me that his football team does not play till three, so I am wide open today. I don't know if that scares y'all or not. Uh, I tell you what, guys, let's go. Let's go right into to prayer. Uh, God, I love you, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today. Um, God, I thank you for such amazing talent uh, that you have sent to this church, God. God, I thank you for the praise and worship, the joy of singing and, and proclaiming your name through song. God, I thank you for uh, friends and family that, that we're able to gather, Father, today and, and just worship you, God, and, and grow closer to you as a family. God, today I just pray, Father, that you'd just speak through me. God, you'd anoint me. Uh, God, I pray, Lord, that, that you would have your way in this place today. We, we invite your Holy Spirit in here. God, I pray that uh, no matter what we've got going on in our life, no matter where we've been or, or, or what's been going on, God, I pray today, Lord, that we come in face-to-face -face contact with you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just have your way with our hearts and our souls and our minds today in this service. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Um, so everybody has brought in the new year and, and all these resolutions and, and all these lies have started already. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to go work out. Liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Uh, the thing about it is, is uh, when we, uh, and I, I do go to the gym. Uh, I don't know that I work out a lot. I go and I, I work out with other guys, uh, athletes. I tell them what to do. That's my idea of working out. But I see this time of year where everybody comes piling in there, and they're all going to be standing in line to get on those ellipticals and those uh, walking machines and stuff. And it's just going to be way too crowded, so I'll just wait a couple more months before I really get serious about it. Yeah, they don't show back up. And so that's the same thing with, with, with our life. You know, we get kind of set out there going, all right, God, I'm going, to, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get all this lined up, and this is what I want to do this year. I want to, I want to just sell it out this year. And we wind up failing at it. And so when we fail one time, it's just like, well, just pu pull the plug on it. You know, I'll wait till next year and start all over again. Well, this morning I want you to know that's not the case. That's not what God intended for us, and that's not... Uh, it's not about a New Year's resolution. It's not about um, what everybody expects to happen at this time of year to happen. It's, that's not what God intended. And today we're going to talk about uh, four things that is going to help us uh, to make this year a better year than it was last year. Uh, today's title is, is Out with the Old and In with the New. And uh, I would give you a scripture, but it's going to be so many of them, so you're just going to kind of have to follow along with me. Uh, but... I think today, if you'll just allow yourself to uh, let God speak to you, uh, you're going to leave here with something that's going to help you through this upcoming year. And we think, man, a, a year, that's a long time. But you know what? It, only, it can only happen one day at a time. You can't, you can't speed up this year in any way. You can't slow it down in any way. It's going to come one day at a time, one moment at a time. And if we'll just prepare for that and, and work through that, I think this year will probably go a lot better than any years in, in the past. Uh, I sat back and, and for this week I've kind of been thinking about well, what's happened this, this past year in my life and in and, and, and life of our church. Um, I think we have seen um, what I hope and pray is just the beginning of one of the greatest revivals I've ever been a part of. And, and we've seen, um, I'm sorry I don't have the exact number, but I, I know we've seen probably upwards to 50 people just this year give their life to Christ. And, and what an amazing thing for that. So, no matter how what, what I could come up with that, that I felt like was a bad year or a bad time, it can't top that. And, and if, if, if this next year goes and we see 50 more people or 150 more people come to know the Lord, man, what, what an amazing thing to be a part of. And, and, and at the rate we're going, I look for that. I look for that... I, I don't know what I look for. I look for a huge number uh, to continue to grow and continue to give their life to Christ. Uh, I, I sat back and kind of said, all right, well, what's some of the bad stuff that happened this year? Uh, what's some of the things that, that you look back and go, well, man, that was a struggle. That was really a rough time. I come up with a few I, that, that I could actually remember and grab a hold of. Uh, really wasn't anything detrimental. I just could kind of remember some stuff that was kind of bad. Maybe a, 
a storm in my life or a season that just didn't jive. Uh, maybe a financial burden. Maybe uh, it, was a, it was a news of, of a loved one that was sick. Or, or um, a, I know I had two or three couple friends of mine that, that went through divorce this year. And I sat back and I thought, man, that, you know, that was a pretty bad time. But it didn't dictate my entire year. Today I want us to look at, at, at what, what can we do to make this year a more positive outlook. Uh, uh, to, to start this year off with positive thinking and positive direction from God. And I think the, well, the four things that we got today is going to be really cool. We'll be able to apply it in our life immediately. First, I got to tell you about this uh, little boy. This little boy was um, woke up one Saturday morning. It was a, a spring type morning. Uh, nice, cool air, but man, you could smell the the the, the flowers had been blooming, and that, you know that spring smell, man. That it's a, you can just smell it. You're hoping to smell it soon. I know uh, after these couple cold days, but uh, he, he woke up, man. He got walked over to his uh, in his room and picked up his ball hat. He picked up the baseball and a bat. He went out the front door and down the block to uh, where the baseball park was. And man, he just had this look on his face of determination and just positive and, and just kind of had that smile on his face like, man, this is going to be a great day. It's going to be the day I wanted, the day I'm hoping for. I cannot wait to get to the ballpark. So he gets to the ballpark and he walks out on the ball field and he looks around and, and, and I, I caught myself doing this kind of when I grew up because well, I didn't have no friends and uh, I, I had to talk to myself, so that's kind of the way I, I, I grew up in my little mind. No, I'm just kidding. I lived in the country and nobody was around me. That was a problem. I lived in the boondocks. Uh, but anyway, we, hey, this little boy gets out there, and man, he's looking around, and he goes, now batting. And he called his name, and he stepped up to the, the plate there, and he took the baseball, and with determination and, and, and just a smile on his face, he threw it up and swung with all of his might, and the ball hit the ground. He reached down with a smile on his face and said, strike one. But now batting, the greatest batter that ever lived. And he called out his name. And with that next pitch, he threw it up and swung with all of his might and it hit the ground. Still with a smile on his face, he, he reached down and he goes, with two strikes on him, the greatest batter that has ever lived steps into the plate. And the crowd goes wild. He took the ball. He really focused on it. He flipped at the bat. He chunked it up. And when he did, he swung with everything that he had, almost to the point that he fell down. And the ball fell right beside him. He got up and he looked at the ball and he just kind of shook his head and said, I am the greatest pitcher that ever lived. Now, what about a positive attitude? Uh, I would say it's a positive attitude, or that's a person that do not like to fail. <laughs> that's kind of the way Bo is when he plays Xbox. If he's just losing, it's like, oh, power shortage, turns it off. Um, but, you know, I, what, what, what would happen if we had just a positive attitude? What would we happen if we went through and, 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 and a storm come up, or what we called a storm in the beginning, and, and said, man, this, I can't believe this is happening, but... Yet, what if God's got something for me in this? What if God wants to do something totally amazing in this storm, and so I'm just going to be positive about it. I'm going to be positive that, that God is going to do what He wants to do, and I'm going to be right where He wants me to be in this thing, right in His face, right in His Word, doing the things that I need to do. And what, what, would, what would happen? I mean, I feel like there would be a success that comes from that. Well, Andy, man, how in the world can you say that's going to be successful if I'm sitting there and, and I'm going through this struggle, this storm? I can look back at my life right now and I can tell you some of the greatest times in my life come right out of a storm. Because God did something in that storm and I allowed Him to speak to me through it. Now a lot of times there's storms that goes in our life and we kind of have what we call the pity party. We sit back and go, man, I can't believe this has happened to me. God, God, I love you. You love me. God, why am I going through this? God, why would this happen to me? And we sit back and we just kind of Woe is me. Woe is this situation. Woe is my life. And that is not the case. The case is actually we're really blessed. We're blessed beyond measure. But yet we kind of focus on the storm. We, I mean, we just 
spend their time looking at the storm and saying, man, this is a terrible storm. Man, this is terrible. Man, it's, it's killing me. This is all this, 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 and this. But yet we don't look at the positive side that, you know what? God said He's going to get us through the storm. He said He's going to carry us through, especially if you're a child of His. He said, I'm going to get you to the other side. But you just got to hang on. You got to trust me. You know, I, I look at all the people in the Bible, and, and as I'm looking at, at, the, at these folks in the Bible, I see all these storms that they went through. And you, you've heard the story about Stephen. We talked about him uh, a couple of uh, months ago, where this guy, man, he, he was praising God. He was sharing his gospel. He was sharing the word. He was doing everything that he possibly could do for the glory of God and his kingdom. But yet they come to Stephen and they say, Stephen, dude, if you continue to share this gospel, if you continue to talk about this guy, we're going to kill you. We're going to stone you to death. We're going to drag you through the city streets and outside the gates, and we're going to stone you to death. And Stephen said, I can't help it. I have to share the gospel of Christ. I have to do what I've been called to do. Number one, it brings glory and majesty to His name, and yet it makes me who I am. It makes me do what He wants me to do. And that's who I'm here to do. I'm here to serve Him. I'm not here to serve you guys. But you understand there's going to be death, Stephen. There's going to be a stoning. And they're not made out of foam. They're made out of rock. They're, they're, they're hard. They're going to hurt. They're jagged. He said, i got to do what i got to do. As, he, as, as they left, he went right back to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that, that what was going to happen to him. And sure enough, man, they drug his hiney out down through the middle of the street, and they carried him outside the gate, and they all circled up around him, and they began to stone him. But the Bible said that Stephen, even in the middle of that storm, no matter what was going on, Stephen said he looked above the folks that were stoning him, and he looked into heaven. And there he saw God and Jesus standing on the right, hand, right side of, of his Father. And Jesus was looking down at him, and he said, you're doing what I need you to do. And the Bible says right after that, it says that the next moment when Stephen opened his eyes, he was standing in the presence of his Father. Man, what better place to be? Bo and I talk about that often, and I, and I believe with all my heart that Stephen didn't feel the first stone because he did exactly what God called him to do, and he did it with a positive attitude. Another guy in the Bible that, that we look at is Paul. Paul had to have something stamped across his forehead. Jesus freak, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the most excited human alive because I get to serve God. He's in prison. And he's fired up about being in prison because he gets more time to write our gospel. He gets more time to write the books in the Bible. He's fired up about it. But yet he's in prison. And this is not a prison with TV and three square meals. This is prison back then when your bathroom was the floor. And everything else. It was just nasty. It was crude. It was just a terrible place to be. But he never was a negative person. Matter of fact, he's, he's writing letters to, to his friends and family and saying, hey, don't, don't think about me here. Rejoice. Rejoice in, in where I'm at because I'm getting to do what God's called me to do. I'd be calling and say, bring me something. A cake with a knife, something in it. I don't know. You know, do, do something for me. But Paul didn't. He was positive about it. Let's look right here and look in the Scripture and see what, it, what it's talking about. Um, it's going to be in